Usually, geography is quite straightforward. We have our planet covered in land and sea. The land is divided by country borders and sprinkled with mountains and rivers, where you can measure the height, length and area and so on. In reality, however, there are many challenges in map making and classifying the things of the physical world around us that geographers face, which often end up as misconceptions for the general public. In this video, we'll go through five of these most common geography misconceptions that still prevail to this date. Number one. There's a chance you've heard this one before, but I'll include it anyway, since many people still get this wrong. The Sahara is not the largest desert in the world. According to the Oxford Dictionary, a desert is a waterless, desolate area of land with little or no vegetation, typically one covered with sand. The emphasis here lays on the word typically. While the common picture of a desert shows lifeless dunes and plains covered in sand, deserts can very well exist without the presence of sand. Antarctica, for example, is one of the driest places in the world, quite desolate and certainly without vegetation. Now when comparing the area of Antarctica to the Sahara, it is pretty clear which one is the larger desert. Number two. It is impossible to measure a country's coastline length, and every number you have ever heard is a mere approximation. This is perfectly explained in the Real Life Laws video, The Coastline Paradox Explained, for which I'll leave a link in the description. To sum it up, in order to determine the length of a coastline, a certain level of detail has to be decided upon before you start. If you, for example, want to measure the coastline length of Malta, you could take a bunch of 100 meter long sticks and place them around the island, and then sum up the amount of sticks you have used. This obviously leaves out a lot of detail since you can't incorporate smaller outcrops or curvatures of the perimeter. To solve this, you could use shorter sticks, but no matter how much you go into detail, there will always be a more precise measurement possible, all the way down to sticks with a length of molecular level. These measurements are even harder when you take tides and waves into consideration. The coastline is a fluid and constantly changing line as waves flow in and retreat again. Due to these circumstances, it is no wonder that different sources have vastly different numbers for the coastline length of different countries and islands. Number three. While Maine may seem like the most eastern point of the United States when looking at a map with the prime meridian in the center, there's actually an island called Semisopochnoi Island in Alaska, which lays on the left side of the 180 degrees meridian and therefore is technically part of the Eastern Hemisphere and therefore the most eastern point of the United States. Number four. The climates of North America and Europe are often misconceiving people's understanding of which places are further north. The warm and Mediterranean Monaco and the Côte d'Azur in the south of France are actually further north than, for example, New York City or Toronto in Canada, even though these two places are known for blizzards and freezing winters. And finally, misconception number five. All maps are wrong and Africa is huge. When trying to fold out a sphere like planet Earth, there will always be some compromises that the map maker has to take into consideration. While the most common projection, the Mercator projection, is great for navigation and displaying the shapes of objects on maps, its biggest problem is the distortion of proportions. To create the Mercator projection, you can imagine plotting the world on a balloon and then placing it inside of a transparent cylinder. After blowing up the balloon further to cover the entire inside of the cylinder, you cut open the cylinder and roll it out for it to become a rectangular map. In the process of blowing up the balloon, however, the equator will first touch the cylinder and stop moving. For the high and low latitudes to touch the cylinder, however, they'll have been stretched from their original position, resulting in these areas being greatly overdimensioned. As a result of this procedure, Greenland and Russia, for example, seem like gigantic landmasses compared to everything near the equator. In reality, however, Africa is 1.7 times the size of Russia, and you can fit 14 Greenlands in the area of Africa. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd be happy if you joined me as a subscriber, and maybe even leave a like. Cheers.